is brought to you by Thermomix. Today, my special guest for lunch is Karen Weaver, publisher, author, TED Talk presenter, life philosopher, momentum visionary woman of a year, and mother of six. I will be chatting to Karen about her journey to success, her recipes for life, while Thermomix is preparing our lunch. Let's meet Karen. Hello, darling. Welcome to my show. Hello, darling. <laughs> Barbara. Karen, what an amazing success story. Because before I go to your life journey with you, what's your definition of success? Well, for me, I, I, I always believe that everyone should have their own definition of success. And for me, it's to live a life where that's happy, that's successful, that I feel energized by. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ambitious. I like to achieve things my way. So and, and being innovative is one of my um, superpowers. I love it. But joy, I prioritize joy very highly. So if I'm happy, everything works around me and success you know, happens. And when and how did you arrive in Australia? Mm. I um, waddled to Australia, um, 35 weeks pregnant in 2008 on the first day of spring. Wow. And um, we knew nobody. We had two days uh, booked on the, the, in a motel on the Great Eastern Highway. And we went on the journey from there. And it seemed irrational to the outside world, but to me, I was, and my, my husband, we just knew it was exactly what we were supposed to be doing. And it was Amazing. 15 years ago this year. Congratulations. Now, when and why did you establish your publishing house, Serenity Press? Oh. Well, I, it was established in 2013. Um, I wrote my first novel in 2010. And it's, so I was a new author. Writing wasn't my strong point, but I had a passion to share a story with the world. And there was a challenge that happened. And I embraced the challenge, wrote my first novel in 30 days. And that novel was a catalyst into publishing. A lot of things happened um, that led me into publishing my pu I um, self-published that novel. It wasn't a good experience, but from every negative situation is the potential for a positive outcome. A lot of um, signs drew me to the fact that I should set up my own publishing company and help stories get told. And serendipity came into play and the print and distribution channel that my previous publisher used opened up an office in Australia. You took my question away, which was about your first book that yes. you say prompted you to to, to establish publishing house. Yes. You also mentioned Whoopi Goldberg experience as a cataclysm to write a first book. Can I take you back to this? Oh, yes. I love this epiphany moment. We all have epiphanies in our life that just catch us and are like a lightning bolt. Yeah. And when Whoopi Goldberg was on The View um, this day, and daytime TV was never on in my house, so this was very odd. So you were watching The View? Yes, watching The View, and Whoopi Goldberg um, had the, the View, they the had a panel that had guests um, on, and there was a celebrity TV couple, reality TV couple, and then they just endured a miscarriage, and it piqued my interest, and I listened, and the woman was still obviously quite distraught, and Whoopi Goldberg just turned her back to the camera and just said to this woman, I want to tell you something that I tell all of my um, friends whenever this happens. This was a visitor that came to help you get back onto the right track in life. And if you do, your gift will come. Barbara, it was like a lightning bolt. It was just like, I have to share this message with the world. And I wrote a blog post, it wasn't enough. And so I started to write a novel and it flowed out of me in 30 days. Incredible. Did you ever write to Whoopi Goldberg about the ripple effect? <laughs> I, I did after the book was published, yes. um, but I never heard back. But I know that we were cross paths when divine timing comes into play. When it's meant to be. When it's meant to be. How many books did you publish altogether? I've published over 400. Over 400? Yes, since 2012. And how many books did you write yourself? Over 40. Wow. Yes. Now, you said you were prompted 
to the first book, you are prompt to the publishing house. You are not just prompt, you, you studied and finished degree in law attraction. Yes. How did it influence your life? Oh, I just loved it whenever I discovered how you, your mind can attract things and how we have that power within us. That was like someone gifted me the biggest gift because I knew then that I was in control of my own destiny. So my studies are in humanities. That's what, what I've, I've studied um, in university. But when I started to study the law of attraction, um, I'd done a certification with it, but I never told anyone, Barbara. I thought, I'm gonna test this in my own life and see what I can make happen and have fun doing it without the pressure. And so I started to set some intentions and went on the journey to allow them to happen organically. Um, I was totally brave whenever it came to the inspired thoughts coming that needed action. And I just went for it. I was really connected to my inner knowing of what I was supposed to do, what was my next step. And I would just take the, you know, I was having, you know, so many amazing things started to happen. You couldn't ignore it. Incredible. Now, in one sentence, to some viewers that may be don't know about law of attraction yes. or would like to know law of attraction in one sentence. Oh, it's where you really set a, an intention. You believe with all of your heart that it's going to happen and you have the, the, the courage to act whenever the opportunities come your way. So you basically awake your intuition mm -hmm. and your gut feeling and you 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 start listening to it much more than you did before. I mean, we can go you, forever. You're aware. Yes. You become more aware of what's Beautiful. around you. You also did, you were a guest on a three TED Talks. Yes. And then what was the subject of your first TED Talk? My first one was called The Power of Story, because that's what I, it's kind of like my signature talk, because story is very important. So I share my Whoopi Goldberg um, story on it, and I also go on to share um, how stories are important in the world and so yeah i love doing that tedx talk it was really beautiful cool. now i just saw you you just i just saw you just came from london from yes. a book fair and you work together with duchess of york can you tell us about your affiliation and your absolutely that was another um it was very aligned with building up my my intention to build a million dollar press with serenity press and i had this inspired thought whilst watching a facebook live that one of my friends um was doing where the duchess of york was a guest at her event and my train of thought was oh there's the duchess of york she used to do budgie the little helicopter what I wonder what you like to do a book for Serenity Press, because we do children's books. And honestly, I just acted on it straight away, sent, found out who her agent was, sent, must have been the most best email ever, Barbara. And then um, two weeks later, I heard back from her team asking for a call. So um, that was amazing. So it was a prog progress, and the call was at the most inopportune time, but I said yes. I showed up, and it, it all just fell into place. That was four years ago. Four years ago only. Yes. Beautiful. And how many books did you publish together? We have a 22 book deal currently, but we, yeah, we're up to book nine. Amazing. Uh, what I also would like to ask you, are you now a movie star? <laughs> I, I saw the birds singing about you uh, acting in a movie called Moms Rising. Yes. That was really fun to shoot. We actually, sh we done it, um, we, it was filmed in a castle in Ireland last June. Um, okay, it, as you do. Yeah. As, as you do. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's all about mums rising, all about the law of attraction, all about working with universal laws, because there's so many more laws than just attraction. There's lots of different ones. So it's because I'm a mum and, and I have had such success, I was asked to be part of this uh, movie kind of documentary kind of thing that's launching in LA in August. Um, okay, you're not just a mom, you're yeah. mom of six. Yes. And you come from a family of children of six where you are the eldest. Yes. Uh, how, how do you make it happen? Do you just match it, you know? My family <laughs> had six, six, bonk, I'm going to have six as well. I'm making a little bit light It wasn't wasn't planned. It wasn't planned. <laughs> it was just destiny. And when Mary was born, she's my sixth, I knew 
I think it was the moment the midwife said, Karen, you've been having children for 19 years. I went, yeah, done. <laughs> so your oldest child was it's... made in Ireland and delivered in Australia. My, that's my third. My two boys were born in Ireland. My four girls are born in Australia. Because we arrived pregnant, that's what yes. I mean. So it's a co-production. That's what I it's said. It's co-production. tell her that she was made in Ireland and born, and born in Australia. Karen, tell me what being a mum means to you. Well, being a mum is the biggest gift. You know, I've always been a mum, Barbara. I'm the eldest of six. So I always had, you know, and my mother and father had kids every year and a half after I was born. So I was always a mother and loved it. You know, there's so much love and it's hard work. It's the hardest job you'll ever do in your life. But there's so many rewards um, from being a mother. So I was a young mum. I was a teenage mum at 19. And I was just so, so happy whenever my son was born. And he's amazing. He's 27 now. This year, it's, it's unbelievable how the years fly in. But there's so much. Um, mums, for me, like I'm still ambitious. I'm a mum first, but I still have dreams that I pursue. I still have ambitions that I make happen. And it doesn't mean that you have to lower your standards, of, you know, lower yourself to be the best version of yourself. Well, we all know that there is such a thing, a day you become mum, the big G arrives in your life, which is guilt, feeling guilty, because you don't want to stop being a person, the mom or ambitious <laughs> entrepreneur, yeah. whichever journey. But whatever you do, you feel like you're taking your time away from being mom. How do you cope being so successful, having such a professional journey, which is incredible, and being mother of six? How do you balance? How is your G? How is your guilt? You bring, I'm fine with the mom guilt. <laughs> I get it, but I deal with it pretty. Uh, I bring my kids along for the journey as much as I can. Like my kids come to Ireland whenever we host our retreats every year. They come, they, they learn from my actions. You know, I am a great believer that our kids learn more from what we do than what we say. Mm -hmm. They just think we're nagging as mothers. <laughs> but if we show yeah. them the way and we show them how we can achieve things, then we're gifting them the knowledge to be able to do it for themselves. So they'll have different interests than I have. I didn't discover my passion for story and writing until I was 31. That's fine, but I was still on an adventure in life. And I just want them to embrace life, get to know who they are in the inside, and then they can build a life that's worth living on the outside. Uh, it wasn't always a smooth ride for you as a mum yes. before you can, can I touch on a very personal Absolutely. story? I believe you suffered miscarriage. Yes, I did. I um, suffered a double miscarriage in 2007, in December. And it was kind of like a wake up call. Um, I had suffered PTSD for 14 months beforehand because of a, an incident that had happened in my home. And this bright, shiny light that walked into a room suddenly became very dull. And, withdrew from from everything but I was still showed up about two kids at the time the two boys and um, yes it was a very dark time I suppose but I didn't fear it Barbara because I had worked in mental health for four years beforehand so I knew it was happening doesn't mean I liked it Barbara I did not like that yeah. time but I call it my cocoon period because hindsight's a wonderful thing and it was the epiphany around why I had a double miscarriage and um, I woke back up to life again whenever I cried tears for those babies that I lost I cried tears for the 14 months I had lost beforehand because I wasn't living when you have PTSD you're just surviving each day you're very emotionless, you don't feel emotion. So how are you supposed to attract amazing things into your life? Everything was going wrong. But whenever I had that miscarriage, that double miscarriage, it woke me back up to life again and everything started to go right again. We got our visas to come to Australia. We got pregnant again with my rainbow baby within um, the, ne the next within the next two months. We, um, we finished off building a everything. We got married, everything happened in one year that happens sometimes for care. So would you say your PTSD was in a way part of your journey to become who you are today? Yes. I call it my cocoon period because when I came out of it, I was a butterfly. I wow. was filled with all these wisdoms for life. I started to just, it was just amazing what was surging through me. I ended up 
whenever we came to Australia, I woke up and had a, like a spiritual awakening. I used to write articles and people really connect with them. They were picked up by magazines all over the world and, and published, republished and things. So I knew I was resonating with people. So I was just sharing my thoughts. I called them my mindful musings with the world. <laughs> and, um, and they were connecting, especially when I talked ab about love and what loving energy is. It's a super fuel for life, especially when you're wanting to attract things. So I keep repeating the phrase, Oprah, yes. whatever happens to you, happens for, for you. you. You are a living example of it. Yes. And when you can identify that, or, and you don't hand that power over to somebody else, as in blame someone else for things, everything that happens to you is for you, absolutely. Because, but when you identify that and work through that, because our challenges are opportunities for us to grow into the next version of ourselves, into a higher, higher, you know, a higher version of ourselves, so that our dreams can become just the very next step. In your introduction, you say you are life philosopher. What's your philosophy for life? Oh. I live. When did you become life philosopher? <laughs> Are you born life philosopher? Did the things that you created made you life philosopher, or the life philosopher made you create things you created? Yeah. Well, I, I call myself a life philosopher now because I have seven master gifts that I live by, and they are mindfulness, knowing, intention, love, gratitude, forgiveness, and belief. And I live through those seven philosophies for life and I call them the master gifts to live on purpose and without fear and whenever I live through those everything flows you know and and all the good things happen so I write on those all the time but within you know I write whether it's for success in your business whether it's for awakening in life or whether it's just you know wanting to conquer life I, I do them in a conquer kind of kit I call it and you can apply them and it just changes your life it just puts it gives you a different perspective on life and you feel so much more in control and in flow what would you say was the biggest challenge in your life to date See, Barbara, challenges aren't negatives to me. They are positives because they help me grow. But definitely the PTSD was the hardest time, but it was also the most rewarding because I grew so much. When you had person. it, did you know you had it? Yes. Were you diagnosed with it? Yes. Yes. And how did you walk to recovery? What, how was your PTSD recovery? Yeah, I Obviously, just so I did the inner work. I didn't hide from the work that I needed to do. I did the inner work within myself. I took each day as need to come. I was totally guided by what I needed to do and um, really got to know myself and what I needed to then heal because it is a healing process. Had, had what happened happened when my cup was full, what happened and knocked me into PTSD, my cup was very empty. I was giving to everybody and not stopping to give to myself. And that was one of the biggest learnings I took out of it was that I needed to keep my cup full so that I can give the best version of myself to others. What would be your big best advice to all mums, moms, mums out there that... Mm -hmm. Stop stressing about motherhood. You know, our kids are going to grow into themselves, they want to find themselves. We're here to guide them, to nurture them, to keep them safe, yes. But we're here to, you know, you can have fun and have joy. Kids bring out that in us and allow yourself to have fun with your children. Let them learn from you. Some parents put too much pressure on themselves for mothers to be the best mother they think they should be. When they, the just the, sometimes the best thing that your child needs is just to be there to them and listen. What would you say if you turn back a clock to a Karen that would be 15 today? 15-year-old <laughs> Karen was having fun. Barbara. <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> she was curious, adventurous, but I would say just keep being you. You know, just keep being you and keep filling that cup. You know, I, I, I did understand it there, but I lost my way and uh, just never stopped to, to, you know. But whereas 15-year-old Karen was on a really beautiful trajectory, she just had a blip. And it was okay. Going back to law of attraction, mm -hmm. do you think that law of attraction 
could be curriculum at schools, at uh -huh. least a portion of it, to awake the interest and the awareness of flow attraction that it existence out there? Oh, see, Barbara, <laughs> would not be. That's the dream. I think that people are just realizing that it's not, man it is life magic. I call it life magic. It's not um, anything to fear. It's to be embraced. And if our children learned the power of the universal laws, the laws we want to, you know, keep, it's it's amazing what it, what the they can then make happen in their own lives. They feel so, in such control. We would have less mental health issues. We would have so much more opportunities. And there would be such a, a you would just feel, there's no lack whenever you understand the laws. Everyone feels prosperous and knows that there's enough for everyone. So you don't need to fear people stealing or you, there's no fear whenever it comes to understanding the universal laws. The world could never ever need it more than now. Yes. Being that unpredictable, being that out of balance, being yes. all of it that we just say. Yes. Do your children follow your law of attraction direction knowledge already? Oh, I'm sure they're absorbing it. But kids are resistant, you know, but they absorb Especially it. Especially when it comes from <laughs> when it comes from, comes mom. from yeah. mom. But they they know and they learn and I see them. Um make their, you know, manifest their own things. My daughter recently wanted a puppy and we were like, no, she manifested that really well. Yes, <laughs> And she got her dream puppy, you know, that she, she wanted. And, and that's the thing, it's, it's if you want something in your life that's going, to, that's aligned with where you're going and you are in the position, you know, that you've created just the environment for that to come into, it's just the next step. So yeah, they do understand. Um. I think that it's actually time for lunch because I can hear the thermomix going. <laughs> so let's just enjoy the lunch. Mm. Yum, is all I said. <laughs> what are we eating, Barbara? Oh, it's most beautiful brown rice salad prepared by thermomix as we were eating. Bon appetit, as we were chatting. That's what I mean. <laughs> oh. Mm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. It has so many healthy wow. ingredients. There's so much goodness in there. The recipe actually is so involved, but so easy. Well, it was done for us. And that's what mums need is something that's nice and quick, mm. yummy, and yeah, good. Mm. Karen, why are we eating this delicious brown rice salad? May I ask you? What's your recipe for life? Oh. Barbara, I, um, joy is one of the main ingredients in my life. It comes from a gift my mother gifted me whenever I was, was younger. If I came to her with any kind of woe, she would say, the answer is to do what makes you happy. So joy is a very big priority in my life. If I ain't having fun, I ain't doing it. Hmm. People need to, another recipe is, or part of my recipe is to just do something that I'm really passionate about. Because when I'm passionate, that's when I give the best of myself and infuse loving intention into everything. Because love is the super fuel for any success. I love it. Wow. You said that you believe, you love life, you believe in magic. Now I give each guest at the end, a magic wand. You get a special strong one, darling, because you already believe in magic. Yes. I'm giving you a magic wand, and you've got two wishes. Yes. One for yourself and mm -hmm. one from the world. What's the one for yourself? Well, the one for myself is just to maintain the, the, the beautiful life that I have right now, just to keep building upon where I'm at, because, you know, we always grow and everything changes. And when you get to a place where you're really happy, you don't want it to change too much. So I just want to keep building on what I've created. And my wish, my gift for the wish for the world is that through my doing that people embrace and the ripple effect of that reaches far and wide through my writings or through my actions or through the stories that we share with the world. It, Stories are powerful, Barbara, and when they reach far and wide, they change people's lives. That's my wish for the world. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the magic.
My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Karen, for being my guest today. Let's enjoy the lunch. Beautiful. Mm -hmm.